Dale Velvet Rose and this is Pin Up Girl Garage Episode 4 and today we're going to do a basic safety check on my car before we travel away next weekend and um, this is something that you should do before you go on a trip, just a basic thing um, and everyone should be able to do it to just check their car over, just the basics. We're not going to go into the brakes, which you would know when you're driving it, if there was brake issues or whatever, and you would take them to your mechanic. But, um, and the car, of course, <laughs> um, or suspension issues. And once you get to know your car and so forth, that you um, should feel when your car changes and be able to highlight that to your mechanic and be able to, you know, say it's making this noise or it's doing this or whatever it needs to be. But today we're going to do some basic stuff like I've got a bit of a list here so I don't forget what I'm doing today um, to make sure that I cover everything. So we're going to check the lights, um, our brake lights, our headlights and our blinkers to make sure they're all working fine. We're going to check to make sure we have no water leaks. Um, we've been checking along the way because a couple of weeks ago, as you know, we did our radiator flush and coolant um, change. And we'll also check our water level again. Um, we'll check the oil. When the engine is cold, it hasn't actually gone anywhere, so we can check all of that. Um, as well as the radiator, you never check the radiator when it's warm or hot. Um, we'll be checking it when it's cold. We'll also check our water washer bottle that washes our windscreen. Check our tyre pressures, um, and if we find it needs something doing to it, well then we'll pop round to the service station and top them up. We'll check our battery, but I have a battery that um, doesn't necessarily need checking of the water levels. So um, we'll um, talk about that later. We'll also check our fan belt to make sure there's no splits or anything in it. Um, because these days you can't just pop a pair of stockings on there because it's way too big. Uh, <laughs> um, check the wiper blades and we'll also, um, you should check your spare as well and check that you have your jack and jack handle and wheel brace in there just in case you need to change a tyre and so forth. So what we'll start off with first is we'll actually check our lights and our blinkers. So what I might do is pop into the car and just since we're at the front of the car, we'll check our headlights and our blinkers on the front. So we should have our park lights now. Probably not if I haven't got my ignition on. <laughs> do we have park lights? Yes, we do, Mr. Noel says. We have headlights. And we'll also check to make sure that we have our high beams. Oh, it helps if I go the right way and don't just flash. Okay, so we're all good there. We'll check our blinker. Why don't we have a blinker? Need an ignition? Yeah. Put your dash lights on. Huh? Ignition. Yeah, they're working. Oh. Must be because on. my actual ignition's not on. That's what I said. Okay. You think it would work with accessories? Check the rear ones. Have we got rear tail lights? Oh, not because I haven't seen them on. What we're going to do, hello. Um, <laughs> what we're going to do now is to check our brake lights. And of course, you don't start your car without making sure it's out of gear and your handbrake is on. So, what we're going to do is because you might be only here by yourself and can't do um, 
you know, because you can't press the brake pedal and then run around the back and check the lights. So if you get something like this and you push your car seat in so it's really close, and which is my normal driving position because I'm um, vertically challenged. Um, so, <laughs> so we'll pop this in here and I'll actually press on the brake pedal. You just get it in the right position and then you can duck around the back and hopefully we have brake lights on. Car's probably not pressing hard enough. Put the need ignition on. we've checked our tail lights also before when we had our headlights on. Okay, so what we'll do now is um, we'll go off and get ready to check our water system. So um, thank you, we'll see you in a minute. You ready? Hi everyone, now we're going to just check our coolant cooling system and just make sure we don't have any water leaks or anything like that from when we did our cooling system the other week and just general maintenance because you might not have done it like a couple of weeks ago like we have. So I'm just going to get a little torch and just kind of have a look under here and just make sure I can't see any drips coming down and also inside there in the radiator so you can't see any like wet patches coming through or anything like that. And then also around the back down on the rails and we'll check some of the pipes while we're here, particularly when we fiddled around with them a couple of weeks ago. Just make sure that we kind of haven't made it a bit cracked or anything like that. All the ones we took off. Yeah, all looks good. And while we're here, we'll just have a look at our belts. Um, we have one big long belt. That's why I said now we can't use stockings to put on there and who can remember how that all goes around all the different pulleys. Because by the time it goes around your power steering and your water pump and your air conditioning and your alternator and as well as your crankshaft, all of that sort of stuff. So, um, not your crankshaft, what is it called? The boat big pulley. Harmonic. Uh, harmonic balancer, yep. So we're just going to kind of have a bit of a squiz and see if anything looks a bit dodgy. You can't, of course, look at every single part of it because it goes under pulleys and one thing and another. But you can tell if your belts are starting to get to look a bit dodgy and you might hear your belt start to do a bit of a squeal. That also tells you what's happening with it and if it's starting to squeal it's probably slipping and you might need to get your mechanic to have a look at it and check it out if it might need a new one because what happens is that the grids on here start to get smooth and then it starts to slip and that's where you get that little squeal that sounds like you've got a mouse under your bonnet. Okay so what we're going to do now is um, with my coolant bottle as well as checking my radiator cap, I can also check in my coolant bottle, which is here. It's got like the little water with the coolant written on it. And again, it's a yellow, which is usually something you can check in your car. It's got this oh, weird looking dipstick. And you can actually tell the level. So you do it the same way as you would your oil. So you pop him back in there. It's a bit hard. It's like trying to get a snake back in a hole. And you kind of just lock him up. And you can see how it's kind of wet. Just here. So you can see it's actually got plenty in it. Because we actually filled it up a bit last time. A couple of weeks ago when we did the filter. But if you are wanting to top up your radiator. When we'll check that now. 
we would actually pour the water into the coolant rather than into the radiator because it'll actually suck off when it needs it. And I'm only using my bare hand because it's stone cold and you never do this when it's actually hot. So we'll come out of here. We do have a little bit, you can see that the water is down a little bit there, but we know that there's some in the coolant bottle, so we should be all good there. Mm. Top it up. Oh, Mr. Noel's telling me we need to top it up. In the coolant bottle or in the radiator? Oh, see? Lucky Mr. Noel's here. So what we've got is the coolant that we had left over the last time, but we've actually put added some extra water to it. So because you always top up your car with coolant rather than, I'll just put it on the ground because it'll be easier, rather than just plain water because you might be weakening if you've had to do it a few times, childproof lock. If you've had to do it a few times, you're actually making it weaker. See if I'm as good a pourer as last time. So we should be getting it up to like the end of the neck. Is that where we're going, Mr. Noel? Oh, I'm not as good a pourer as last time. Oh, it is taking a bit. Gee, I didn't think it was as... Whoa! <laughs> I think it's full now. So, and I actually keep that water bottle in my car. Hopefully I won't need it, but you just never know. So then I put my cap back on and make sure you get it on tight. It locks on just like your petrol cap. And it should also always be like parallel to your radiator. And it locks in properly, otherwise, you don't want that kind of like um, spewing out everywhere as you're going down the road. Okay, so what we might do now is we'll check our oil. So we'll go around our car like this. We know our air cleaner is good because we cleaned that a couple of weeks ago as well. Um, and you can see that on another video. Um, so we'll just check our oil. I'm just going to grab a piece of hand towel out of the car because it's. So I was just talking to Mr. Noel about why I had to top it up in here and he said because it was actually down quite a bit in there So and because we'd only done the coolant flush not long ago. So yeah, um, and if your radiator is down by that much, it's not going to get enough um, water out of the coolant. If it was only down a little bit, well then you just give it a bit of a top up in the coolant bottle. Okay, so I've got a bit of hand towel here that I'm just going to pull out my um, engine oil dipstick here which is another yellow thing which you probably have different colors on your car but mine's yellow okay so you give it a clean off try and get it back in the hole and with mine it has kind of like a hatched area here which means that if you're in the hatched area that you're all good and don't need to add any more if it was actually down in this area here you would have to add and you only add the oil the same type of oil as we put in previously you'd never add like another oil to it and mix it in so you are always like if you've got like a little bottle of the normal oil that you're um, mechanic puts in it or you've put in it previously if you had someone helping you do an oil change you keep a little bit for that um, if your car uses oil a bit if it's gone down and it's gone right down and it's only been kind of changed not long ago I'd be taking it back to your mechanic and discussing it with them um, to make sure that your car's not using oil because that would be no good Okay, now what we're going to do is we'll check our windscreen washer bottle. So this is the one that has a little squirty thing on it. And you don't want to kind of mix that up with the coolant. Otherwise, you'll end up with green on your window. <laughs> 
and I don't think it'll be very good for your washer system either because it'll be a bit thick. So what we're going to do is we've actually put a bit of, you can get some windscreen um, cleaner for your windscreen and you can pop that in and it actually helps for the water to run off your windscreen once it starts raining and it'll actually start it up a bit as it's um, cleaning it off and get any like bugs and so forth on it. We've just got a little bit in a container here which is clear which we've labelled just with a pen on the white over here. Um, you should never really put, you should never put chemicals in a bottle that looks like a juice bottle or anything like that without clearly labelling it and you should never leave a juice label on it if you've got a different chemical in there otherwise someone might come along and drink it and think it's green cordial but it's not. So um, we've just labelled it with a texture on the other side. So this is actually a little bit of windscreen cleaner which we're going to just pop a little bit, um, not a lot, just a sloop is it? Uh, oh, in the here. I was thinking we were putting it in the container we were filling the water up with. So how much will we put in Mr Noel? Just a little bit. Okay, about half of that. That's right. Very concentrated. It's very concentrated, so you only need a little bit. And now what we'll do is we'll just top it up with the watering can or the hose. It's very annoying how that lid doesn't stay where it's meant to. Oh god, I'm not very good at pouring this one. Whoop, and we're full to the top. And you can see how it's sudsed up a bit when it came up to the top. So I'll just stick that back on there and make sure it's on properly. Okay, so, oh, so my battery, I can check the water levels on and this is something that you should do periodically to make sure some batteries you don't have to. There's self-maintenance, aren't they called, or something like that. Um, so mine actually is old school style Ooh. and we'll have to get something to take it off with because it's a bit tight. Ouch. Um, we might have to oh, get the rag. We might need to get a little tool. But anyway, I'll grab a little tool and we'll do that. But um, what you do is you actually pull off each of these little plugs and you can actually get a torch and look in there and there's all like the lead plates that help your battery chart you know help it um, get the charge so it actually runs through a chemical reaction with the lead and with the sulfuric acid that's in there and you also have to be very careful when you're working with batteries because it is sulfuric acid and lead and so what you actually do is you have a look in the little cells and you just make sure that um, that there's actually oh Mr Noel's got one off yeah I will and we'll have a little look in there and we'll just grab the torch. And you should make sure that your water is just, you can see it's just over the plate there. You probably can't see, it's a bit hard. But it goes just over the, it almost looks like a little piece of corrugated iron kind of thing. They're all the little pieces of lead. And you just make sure that your water level in each of your cells is that level and you actually only really um, don't you usually just put distilled water in your battery because some of the chemicals that are in the tap water can actually affect the chemical reaction that's in the battery so we'll progressively go through and check those other ones but yeah most batteries if they don't have this type of screw on the top it usually means that they're actually um, self-maintaining, so you don't need to worry so much. Now we'll just check and make sure our we make sure our ignition's off before we do this, and we just make sure our battery terminals aren't loose. No, they seem fairly solid because you don't want anything electrical on when you're doing that, because that wouldn't be very good at all. Okay, and we might just have a look and see our brake fluid. 
Yep, can you see that in the video? Mm -hmm. So you can see here that it's got like, it's on the maximum level there. If it was down a bit, we could top it up with some brake fluid, but brake fluid is very corrosive. So you need to be very careful when you're um, topping up brake fluid and also um, just to make sure that you don't get it on. Okay, and this other little container sitting beside here is actually my clutch fluid and it's only really small. So you actually take that off there and you can see it's full as a goog, pretty much. And you use the same fluid as brake, yeah, in there because it has a high boiling point and so because it's under pressure it all works off hydraulics so that's why you use the same fluid in both and also this is my power steering here it's pretty much up to its maximum level it's just down a frag but not much and you wouldn't use the same fluid in there you actually have power steering fluid or oh, transmission oil Mr Noel is telling me which is red colour yeah yeah, because different oils and different fluids are different colours. Usually brake fluid is sort of like a clear bluey colour. Um, yeah, transmission oil is red and diff oil is like a purpley sort of browny colour, Mr Noel is telling me. And of course, oil that goes in your engine is like a normal oil colour. <laughs> we have all these pretty colours in our car, so that's pretty cool. But that's so because each of the different oils actually has different boiling points because the oil that goes in your transmission has different um, viscosity and boiling point compared to what goes in your diff and transmission oil for an auto is different to a transmission oil for a manual gearbox which mine is. Okay, so what we might go and, is go and have a look at our list and see where we're up to. I think we might be up to tyre pressures now but I'll just go and check our list. I'll be oh, here we go. Oh, I've got something on my hand. Okay, now we're going to... I'll check my list now. It's almost like Santa Claus's list, really. And I shut my bonnet. And now what I'm going to do is, um, is check my windscreen wiper blades. And you just make sure you've got nothing that's going to scratch your car. So you can see here... Can you see that, Mr Noel, or no? Mm -hmm. So you actually run your hand up it and make sure there's no digs or divots in there because then that will mean that you'll have stripes on your windscreen when your windscreen wipers are working. Also, you make sure that it feels quite flexible still and that it's kind of not through to the metal because if it's come down to the metal, it'll start scratching your windscreen, which I had once before. Um, if these are fairly easy to replace and we'll do that in a, at a later date. Mr Noel replaced mine for me not long ago. But if you get stuck, you can go to Super Cheap Auto in your area and the people there are happy to um, install them for you if you buy your wiper blades there. So they'll install them for you in the car park. So they'll all be good. So you always just check that. I'll just duck around and check the other one. Make sure that one's all good because it's important that you can see in the rain. Um, so I'll just do the same thing with that. Just run it down there. Make sure it's all in all right and there's no little clips come off either because they can also scratch into your screen as well. So that's all good. Now what I'm going to do now is just to finish with my windscreen system is to um, just check to make sure my squirters work. Again, I'll um, pop into the car. I always put my foot on the brake, turn on the air, air, air conditioning, ignition. <laughs> okay, and this and I'll probably going to get sprayed. Wiper goes. So if you're putting a big scratch across there, 
that and be able to lift your wider blades when it's working, or if they didn't clean the screen properly. So, um, so now what we're going to do is check our tyres. So the first thing we should do is check what our manufacturing specifications are. And I might have to get Miss and Ol to come around here. And this tells us, I know that my tyres are actually 17s. So, but if you actually had 16s on the car, it would actually tell you that um, the maximum you should have in the front is um, 32 and in the rear is 36 if you want a maximum load and if you're just driving around normal like I do and hardly ever have stuff unless I'm going to a pin-up pump or something and then it gets overloaded um, <laughs> it'll be like 29 and 29 in the front and rear but because here in Port Macquarie I'll just shut the door and come up here a bit further because here in Port Macquarie, we have a lot of roundabouts in port, so we don't like to, otherwise you'll be running off the edges of your tyres, you'll actually be making the edges of your tyres wear out quicker, and Mr Noel um, is a tyre specialist, and he's told me that I should actually run 38 in my tyres. So that's what I'll be checking now, but you should also check with your tyre person to work out what is the best one for your area as far as um, your car specifications and the tyre that you have on them and also your driving conditions. Of course when I go to the drags I'll change my tyre pressures but we'll talk about that in a later video. If I'm competing at the drags that is. So what we'll do is we'll take the dust cover off our valve like that and if you're at the servo, you put it in your pocket or just hold it close to your tyre so that you know where it is. And I'm just going to put this end here on my tyre like that. And you just press like that so there's no air escaping. And it says on here that it's actually like 32. So it probably needs to go and get, or 34 actually. Um, so it probably needs to go and just get um, the tyres checked. Well, not checked, but pumped up a bit more um, so that you could actually go to the garage and add a bit more air into it to bring it up to the 38 that's about here, just before the 40, because each of those stripes actually makes for two in the PSI, so pounds per square inch, and some things work on kilopascals and all of that sort of stuff, but I'm old school, <laughs> and, and it's easier to think about 38 and 32 and 29 and so forth. So I'll probably stop by the servo tomorrow before um, I go to, um, while I'm out working tomorrow. And what you do is you go around to each of your tyres and you just check it. You just press this little button on the side of the tyre gauge and it goes back to naught. You can get a tyre gauge like this from Super Cheap Auto. You can get even a digital one. There's another one that I've got in there that you actually press and the little thing shoots out and it gives you a measurement. So there's lots of different sorts, but you just need to be mindful of um, making sure you've got it on there. Same as when you go to the service station with the newer um, tyre gauges, you just need to make sure you've got it on the actual um, valve properly, otherwise sometimes it can actually let air out and not put air in which isn't very good. Okay, so I'll pop past tomorrow while I'm out and about and just add a bit more air and check all of my tyres. And we might even do that as a separate video later down the track, but you can even just go to your tyre shelf where you actually got your tyres from and they will actually check your tyre pressures for you and just double check the wear on your tyres and so forth. So that's the end of episode four. Thank you, everyone.